running this Life of Focus group um, and hearing from these students that agreed to be with us today about their experience. Um, we, I, they just, I think, got to see for a minute copies of the report. I don't think they saw it in advance, so we haven't, <laughs> nobody's been prepped um, in this. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to them about the, what we heard from students and advisors about the policy proposals get their reactions and then open it up to questions so that you guys, if anybody has questions about the research or about the, um, or for the students themselves, we have an opportunity to do that. So that is going to be how we proceed. All right. This thing comes out of here, I take it. I can leave it there. Excellent. Great. <laughs> Thank you. All right, um, so if we could just start quickly by, if you guys could each um, introduce yourselves quickly and say a couple of words about um, why you decided to pursue an education after high school. So the way the focus groups work, and I don't know how many of you have been a part of these things, that you know, they generally start very broad and work into specific um, kinds of issues. And one of the things that we always ask students at the beginning of a focus group is, what, why is father, right? Because it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of money um, to pursue an education uh, after high school. So what's the point? So if you guys could just take a minute to um, reflect on that, and then we'll get into some more specific issues. Um, I am Mike Ware. I am a senior at Indiana State University. I have a degree in language studies, and I hope to complete or hope to enter the ESL program in the summer. But for me, um, I just wanted to get it. I just wanted to go to college because I knew that I needed it. And I, after I'd searched around, I just felt like I was called to go to ISU because I really feel like they have the resources that I needed. Because when I, well, that's a problem. I have Asperger's. And so for a kid going through high school, it's hard enough because we need routine, we need stability and college is a crazy roller coaster ride and ISU for me gave me that um, stability that I needed. Hi, I'm Jordan Bramwell. I'm from Indiana University. My major is human development and family studies with a minor in counseling and psychology. I am looking at grad schools right now because I'm a senior and I want to go for marriage and family therapy. Um, the reason that I decided to go to college was because even though I wasn't sure what I wanted to do like a lot of freshmen, I had some ideas and everything that I could think of wanting to do, I had to have a college degree for. Um, I grew up with my dad, he's the most awesome person you'll ever meet and he raised me and it was an expectation that I would pursue higher education. Okay. My name is Sonobia Garrett. I am a Ball State University senior. My major is organizational communication with a minor in leadership. Um, I decided to go to college because it only felt like the right thing to do. It felt like the next step. Um, and with me being first generation as well, um, I feel like I wanted to prove something to my family too and be that person that steps up and says, okay. I know a lot of people in my family have not went through college. Some people are currently in college, you my aunts and uncles and, and people like that.
did you how did you choose your initial program of study and um, and then at what point did you realize that you needed to change it? <laughs> and we can let's actually start the other way this yes. time. <laughs> I actually added to mine. I initially came for culinary arts and I knew that I wanted more than just an associate's degree. Uh, most culinary schools don't offer anything more than an associate's degree, and if they do, it's definitely not at the price point of Ivy Tech. Uh, so I knew that there was there was something I needed. I wanted to go more. I wanted a bachelor's degree and hopefully graduate school and someday a PhD. And so I knew that I would have to add a hospitality management or some sort of business in there. So that's basically why I added to mine. Um, and along the way, you know, our course curriculum has changed and all those things, but okay. that's generally, I didn't really switch, I just added to. Okay. So now, how did you, what was your, how did you choose what to do? Okay. So there's two things I like to do. I like to talk, <laughs> and I like to help people. So I said, oh, let's be a counselor. So I, I felt like that was the only right thing to do. So originally, my major was psychology. Um, and I was like, yeah, psych, psych, you know, I took a psych class in high school, too, so I was like, yeah, I really like my teacher. It was cool. I was like, I'm really, I'm, I'm really feeling this right now. So I just felt like psych was for me. I got to college, took psych classes, and it was like, no, there's no way. I'm doing this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a counselor necessarily, um, but I still want to help people. So I honestly don't really remember how I decided to go to comp studies, but um, I ended up switching to comp studies. I just felt like it was. Yeah, I really don't know. I just ended up picking comp studies. Well, I guess it's more of a general, um, my, okay, my original thinking was comp studies is a kind of general degree. So I was like, okay, I'll do comp studies. It sounds like something. I just didn't want to be one of the people that were kind of like, oh, I'm undecided. I don't like being undecided. I like being decided. So I chose comp studies. And um, with comp studies, I love comp studies from the first class to all the classes that I'm currently in. I love it. It's perfect for me, and I'm happy that I changed my mind. I think there are two, is this too loud? Is this too close? Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> I think there are two main reasons that like freshmen have a major when they come in. I think it's either, either a result of what their parents want them to major in, or it's just an area that they like, like in English. But they don't realize that if you only want to go to undergrad with an English major, then you're kind of in trouble. You need grad school for that. So they just think about a topic they're interested in and not really think about the jobs that they might want later. So I went in totally with my dad's influence, which is a good influence, but I still had to find my own way. So I went in majoring with political science and econ and a minor in history. And I love all of those topics, but then I realized, well, I don't want to be a political analyst and I don't want to go into politics. And a lot of schools have psychology, but a lot of schools don't have human development and family studies. And the classes in it are very specific for um, being a marriage and family therapist. And so I found a major and fell in love with it. I love all my classes and all my professors, so I'm really glad that I made that switch. Well, for myself, um, originally I was a history major. And I had chosen it because I, I am very interested in history, and specifically American history. But as I was taking my classes, it, it wasn't just my, um, I felt my advisor was not really helping me that much. I just couldn't really connect with him. And also, it was when I had reached my historian class, I had reached a breaking point, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to take that again. So. I went to the ISU Student Support Services, and I had asked Debbie Frida, and they had said, well, why don't you, you like Spanish, well, why don't you consider being a language studies major and then getting an English as a second language as your certification? And so, with the influence from my parents, who had given me all these exposure to the Spanish background, Latin American background, I've really started to fall in love with the Spanish culture, and I just realized that they are becoming a huge part of our education majority now, instead of being a minority, and I feel like I just need help. I'm necessarily in that situation because I kind of, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but eventually I got on track and I, I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I'm going for it, so I'm going to get this done. Um, so are they supposed to be, you know, or, or should they end up being, you know, to where they, they focus more on the specific things for us, which I know that's a lot because they have a lot of students, which, you know, is understandable. 
But I feel like for me, when I came from my more general, you know, freshman advisor and went to my major advisor, it, it was a, it was a shift. It was very different. It was very beneficial. Um, but I don't know. I guess what I'm thinking is like, is that what they're supposed to serve as? You know, our specific advisor. Because if so, that's a lot more work. You know, for them or them to do. Well, for me, I feel like it, when you are going for a four-year degree and you're going to have the same advisor for that major, I feel like you need to really get to know who you are having. I know it is a lot to have a number of students, but for me, I feel like education is personal. And if you don't get to know them and if you don't find out what their interests are, what, why they picked this major, they're going to be going off in a completely wrong direction when they should be going to something completely different. Like with me, I had my advisor, but I just could not connect with him, and he really didn't give me a whole lot of information until I was completely frustrated, and then I went over to the Student Support Services at ISU, and I felt enlightened because they sent me to the language department, and I just felt home there. More freedom. And that freedom, uh, you know, these things are naturally equated. And that freedom is the goal, and then if you want to be free, you have to have as many choices as possible, and that fewer choices is less freedom, um, and that you, you're losing important things. But that the research in neuroscience and behavioral economics and a number of fields now is sort of demonstrating that human beings don't actually respond very well to um, a huge, infinite array of choices. We tend to um, we're more likely to be unhappy about the decisions that we made. We're more likely to get anxious. Um, we're more likely to kind of resort to irrational decision-making processes um, because we because there's this sort of infinite array. Um, and so the, the idea is that instead of becoming sort of more free and capable through infinite choice, that we that you know we're, we can also see anxiety, and paralysis, bad decisions, things like that. And I'm curious about, um, you know, in the conversations that we have with students um, and advisors, there really is this tension, right? Because people want to be able to explore, and they want to be able to have a choice, and they want to, but they also, um, who, the students that we talked to did talk about sort of the experience of navigating the course catalog and how do I choose, you know, if I'm interested, if I like to talk and I like to help people and I'm interested in this, how do I choose between psychology or sociology or, you know, political science? Um, and so I'm curious about what your um, experience of, you know, what, what do you think about that paradox of choice idea? Um, does it resonate with you at all? I don't know anybody who wants to jump in. I actually uh, read a study about students that were gave the option to submit an assignment out of like a choice of five. And it's funny when you started talking about that, I, this hit the nail on the head for me. And these students would have a choice to submit one of the five, or they their instructor would just say, I'm taking this one, and that's the one they can get. And after like a week, the people that submitted one of the, their one chosen assignment, those same people were able to go back and submit something different if they wanted to. And it's funny because most of the students did and then regretted the choice a week later when the survey. <laughs> so, but all the students that they just, their assignment was taken and that was it and you didn't get a choice and their instructor just took it, they were surveyed the same two weeks later and were absolutely fine and not thought about it again. So, and I do the same thing with classes, though. I think, well, if I have a choice between this class and this class, which one is going to greater benefit me in five years and blah, 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 I don't even know if it matters. So I think there is something to be said about saying, these are your, you know, here's your core curriculum, this is what it is, this is what you have to take, this is what every student has to take. Then you get a couple of choices, you know, further on, based on if you'd like to talk a little bit more, or... For me, do you like catering a little bit more? Or do you want to do specialized cuisine? And that's been a great benefit for me to only have two choices. You know, in a, in a, otherwise, if I have ten or twenty, I couldn't imagine choosing. Okay. So, I mean, what do you think? I'm curious. I believe I'm just gonna make this one simple statement. I believe that um, freedom is not having an abundance, but it's just having the ability to decide. Huh. So, not necessarily that you need a lot, but. Simply, you have the you have the ability and capability to decide A or B. 
So this is really interesting because one of the one of, and one of our speak one of the speakers today is from Austin Key State University in Tennessee, and I've, we've done a bunch of my organization has done a bunch of work. Um, 